All right, hey there everybody. Uh, kind of a new format here. I don't know how I like the webcam, so you guys will have to tell me how you like the webcam. Please make sure to comment down below if you like the webcam or if looking at my amazing handsome face is distracting. Um, all right, so today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a simple branching story like this that we're going to use as the basis for our branching dialogue with an NPC. So I have story, and then this is in what's called ink. Um, we're going to be exporting this whole story as it is into Unity in the next video. So by the end of this video you should be able to have a nice branching story where you can have different questions and you can have different choices that you make and from there the story will change. So let's jump right in. Okay, hey there everybody. Welcome back. It's been a minute or two. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how we can use some outside tools to create a branching dialogue system for the game that we've been working on. Uh, the outside tools I'm going to use, this is Yoda, in case you guys haven't seen her on a video before. I'm sure you've heard her. Anyway, the outside tool I'm going to use in this case is called Ink. It is a narrative scripting language that is a markup language that was created by a company called Inkle. Inkle made uh, 80 Days, which is an excellent mobile game. I definitely recommend you guys try it out. They also made a really good mobile game based on the Steve Jackson um, Fighting Fantasy. Well, I guess it wasn't Fighting Fantasy, it was its own series. But um, there were these uh, individual role-playing games that you played through a book called Sorcery, and they made a three or four games on that that are on mobile as well. They're also really, really good. I definitely suggest trying those out. Anyway, we're going to use their um, tool, which is called Inky, which uses Ink, which is their scripting language. Now, you can find this at inklestudios.com backslash ink. I'll include a link to that in the description. This has um, a basic tutorial and a full guide along with the download of Inky. This is what you'll use to actually edit your videos, or not videos, your uh, your scripts. Now there's built-in Unity integration. They've built this specifically to be middleware. So on this page you can find the Unity integration. Uh, there's a link to it on the Asset Store. If you go to the Unity Asset Store you can also just search for Ink and it'll come right up. Or you can download it from GitHub. I personally prefer to download it from GitHub. I don't have any proof that that updates any faster than it would on the asset store, but I feel like it would, so that's how I do it. So if you go to inklestudios.com slash ink, you can uh, download Inky, and you can also download the Unity integration directly from there. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Inky to set up a very simple branching dialogue, and then in the next video, we're going to take this simple branching dialogue and we're going to bring it into our Unity project so that we can have a branching dialogue with an NPC. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. All right, so once you have your uh, Inky installed this, and you bring it up, this is what it's going to look like. This is an untitled story. I can't save the project until I actually have something. One of the reasons that I like Inky over Yarn Spinner or Fungus is I feel like it's really, really easy to visualize the story and the simplest ink story that will still compile and work is just a single line. Yoda, stop. It's just a single line. So I could write anything I wanted to here. I could just do Hello World. And after it has a second to compile, that shows up over here in the side. The side is kind of the, the story itself. I can add choices by using an asterisk. I really should know which one is the asterisk without having to look down. And the choices that you add will change the story, and they'll also show up as well. So like, I could do asterisk, hello to you as well, exclamation point. And now this is an actual choice I can have. And I can have as many choices as I want just by adding more asterisks, and these choices can nest into themselves by um, for example, this single asterisk is the single level choice. I can have two asterisks for a second level, three asterisks, and so on. So what I'm going to do here really quickly, and I'll fast forward through this part, but I'll, I'll leave it here, is I'm going to write a very, very simple dialogue that is going to have a couple different ways that it could branch out, and a couple different endings. So 
once I get that done, I'll come back here and I'll explain to you guys how I did that. Okay, so here we go. I've got this uh, dialogue set up. So you start up, you, sp you speak to the NPC, they ask, uh, what do you want? You say either I just want to be hi, or hello, or don't be rude. And you can see that right now, if I click hello, it'll say that your dialogue was actually, I just wanted to say hi, instead of it being actually hello, which is kind of a nice feature, I think. You can hide uh, exactly what the text is going to be, which is something that I always liked about games like Mass Effect or uh, Dragon Age. Uh, so I could go back and I can choose that again to don't be rude. This here, the single dash, is what's called a gather. So no matter which choice you choose here, it goes back to that. And then this is how you would change the flow of the story to what Inky calls a knot. So this uh, dash and then greater than symbol makes an arrow that will send you to uh, a knot. And a knot is something that has at least two equal signs to begin it. You don't have to have these equal signs on the end. Um, in fact, I had an unequal number of equal signs. And so this, it's kind of like calling a function. And when you go to the divert, it immediately starts in with the text from the divert. And each of these asterisks are individual choices that you can see are over here. Uh, and each choice, if I ask about the cave, um, I'll get some information, and then I will have the option to press go back. It won't automatically go back. And when I press go back, it reloads this diversion again. But since I use an asterisk here, that initial choice that I chose about the cave is not going to be there anymore. So now I can ask about the town, go back, I can ask about the lake, and she's going to ask me if I want to get a bracelet. I'm going to say no. Uh, ask about the monsters, she's going to ask me which monsters. I'm going to say the monsters right there. Go back. And now all that's left is for me to leave the conversation. And then sorry I didn't mean to talk to you. And then we're done. That's the end of the story. So this is a really simple dialogue. Um, you can kind of see how I wrote that up. I had a question because I was having this weird thing where um, I was only seeing three questions. And it's because I have a gather right here. And sorry, I can't embiggen this. If you even go to like the window, or not window, it's view? Yeah, <laughs> you don't have zoom controls. So it's a little frustrating. Um, this gather here I had as a single gather, which meant that these questions weren't um, referencing. If you, so something that you want to be able to ask again and again, if you use a plus sign instead of a uh, asterisk, so hello. Now if I ask about the cave and go back, I can ask about the cave again. So something that you can ask about infinitely, you want to use a different symbol. They have a whole guide online about how to do this, and there's a lot of people who could make just just fiction from this. Um, one of the things I had thought about doing with my programming kids this year is having them start with making a choose-your-own-adventure story using something like Inky or Yarn Spinner or even twine, so that they could just get the feel for how objects interact with each other. But this is my file. Now, of course, I went and I saved my project, and I saved it as test. Now, if you're following along, you're going to want, like I said, not just the inky, so make inky and then uh, go through your, your little dialogue that you might want to make, and then um, Go to the Unity integration, which you can get from Unity itself or from GitHub. For some reason, I just like getting it from GitHub. And there's a guide here. There's a basics tutorial, which I found kind of helpful. And then there's a full guide, which is closer to like an API. And so this talks about the basics, comments, gathers, knots, stitches, all those things. Now this, the uh, basic guide, is kind of a bit easier to read at first, but it doesn't cover absolutely everything, so you might want to take a look at the other one. Now I know some of you are wondering um, where the abilities videos are. I'm going to finish those. I totally am. I just had a few thoughts about how I could make it better, and so until I make it better, I figured I could move on and at least get something out there. So this is going to be what's the first part of probably a little five-part um, diversion talking about branching dialogue, but you can see how easy it was for me to make the logic for that branching dialogue. 
Now I could have made this in JSON using either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, and I could also have used Yarn Spinner or uh, Fungus, but uh, I've only played with Yarn Spinner a little bit. Uh, I just I think Yarn Spinner is a little less friendly as far as writing in, and I think Fungus is a bit disconnected. It's hard to see how the story fits together in Fungus. So there we go. Um, yeah, next time we're going to talk about how to actually put this into Unity and set up our dialog so that it works, so that Unity can read from the Inkle story and that Inkle can communicate with Unity. So I will see you back here then soon.